So I've been living in Korea for almost a year now and ever since I've arrived I've always wanted to visit this beautiful island. Jeju is considered the Hawaii of Korea and looks incredible in more ways than one. I'm going to explore this beautiful island and I'm going to take you guys along for the ride with me. Let's go! Okay, so I've just rented a car straight from the airport, like a two minute walk from the gate, which is so convenient. I would highly recommend you do the same. All the attractions all over the island, they're pretty sporadic and they're not all in one place. So if you're catching public transport, or you are walking, or I mean, you're not going to be walking, but if you are catching public transport, it's going to be pretty difficult. So rent a car, save you a world of trouble and just do it the right way. It might be a little bit more expensive, but in terms of time, it's going to save you a lot of time and you're gonna see so much more. Right, so I'm on my way to the first spot of the day. We've been driving for about 10 minutes so far and I am amazed by the scenery of this place. All the roads, all the scenery is just so green and I really understand why they do call it the Hawaii of Korea. Ugh. After a one hour drive, we've just arrived at the Chanjian Falls. This place is a collection of three waterfalls in the same space and I think it's only a short walk from one place to another. There is a small entry fee and I think it's around 2001, which isn't much at all. But what a beautiful day for it too. Let's see what these waterfalls are about. Out of all the waterfalls on Jeju Island, these are known as the biggest ones. Both the first and the second waterfall were breathtaking. But I would say the first one even more so. And at the time that I came to visit, it wasn't busy at all, which made an incredibly peaceful atmosphere. We're on our way to the third and final waterfall. This one's a little far away compared to the first two. There's a big bridge you can walk across. There's this nice little walkway, what you can see. But the do make you work for, it's quite a long walk. But on the picture, you could see it does look like it's the biggest one. So hopefully, it's worth it. As I just mentioned, immediately after the first two waterfalls, you will come across a huge bridge that crosses you over onto a beautiful little temple area and observatory. It is a bit of a detour from the waterfall path, but it's definitely worth seeing if you do have the time for this. Okay, so 10 minutes later, I'm still walking. I don't know if you can hear the waterfall by now, but it's a lot louder, so we are getting close. That walk to the last waterfall doesn't look that far on the map, but it just went on and on and on. Also, be on the lookout for spiders and snakes and all kinds of critters along that waterfall path. I came close to way too many for my liking. Ah, oh, look at this! I don't know where it's hanging from, so I don't want to touch the... Ah, oh, it's hairy. It's got more hair than me. Guys, I could see the bottom! Woo! I don't know if you can hear me over the smashing and the crashing and the thrashing of this waterfall, but it is pretty cool out of the three. I think this third one is my favourite one. That was pretty good, I'm quite impressed with that. The three waterfalls, they're all so beautiful, and honestly the scenic hike through these little paths and underneath the trees is absolutely stunning. Something that I will say too is that I've came to the waterfalls a day after the typhoon has hit the island, so as you can imagine there's a lot of rainfall, and if you time it right, in terms of a lot of rainfall and you come the next day, the waterfalls are even more beautiful, as you can imagine there's, you know. Okay, so a short drive away from those waterfalls is the Chocolate Museum, which is where we're going to next. If I've got any Brits on here, you will have been to the Cadbury Museum. Everybody's been to it. I went to it so much as a child. But this place, I imagine it's going to be something really similar. If you haven't been to a Chocolate Museum before, I would highly recommend because these places are wicked. The one in the UK, you get lots of free samples and lots of free chocolate, which, <laughs> you know, who doesn't love a bit of chocolate? The Chocolate Museum in Jeju is the only chocolate museum in Asia, so I would definitely take advantage of this if you're in Korea. It displays a variety of exhibits that describe the history of chocolate, and you can also buy chocolate made on site at the museum shop. Okay, so I'll be completely honest with you, this, this is a waste of money. I can understand why they've gave you free coffee now. Look behind me, Christmas decorations, it's September. 
I don't know if they're really early or they just left them up the whole year. This place is nothing what I imagined. I imagine like a factory just like the one in England where you can see the chocolate making process, you can see how it's made, you can see the processing, you can see workers cutting it into bars. Nope, nothing like that at all. It's just a museum full of cacao beans and you can see the history of a cacao bean, which is pretty cool, I'll give it that. It is a little cool, but it's pretty small. It's not worth the money at all, sorry to disappoint you. But you do get free coffee, well, 7,001 coffee. <laughs> yeah. I mean, on the plus side, the outside of the building's pretty cool. They've got this cool little train. There's a tree house over there. Oh my God, the sun is blinding me. There's a tree house, there's a swing. <laughs> that was so scary. There's a lot of picturesque places, so if you're after a good photo, this is a pretty cool place to come. But as for the chocolate museum itself, it's not the best, not the best. <laughs> <laughs> but lucky for you and lucky for us, the island is huge and there's so many more attractions to come and see. So let's go and see some of them instead. Right, I've picked a beautiful location to finish off with today. It's coming to an end, the sun is setting and we've come to the Chusang Cliffs. Might be Chusang, 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 same thing. But it's these cool rock formations on the coast and they're formed through lava or magma, something like that. And they've got these really cool pillars all along the edge of the sea. It is absolutely beautiful. The only bad thing is that this place closes at six. Like most outdoor attractions at this place, they have a time limit, they have a gate where you can enter. Like I said, there's a fee to get in most of them. It's cheap as chips, it's so cheap to get in. But it's just a shame that it closes at six because you want to watch the sunset really and the sunset's about seven these days. It's a shame but it's beautiful either way and it's a perfect thing to end off the day with. Absolutely beautiful. You can find these cliffs on the southern part of the island and even if you're staying on the northern side it's definitely worth the one hour drive down. As you can see its hexagon shaped pillars are so unique and I've never seen anything like this. As mentioned, the crowded pillars on the cliff edge were a result of the Halasan mountain erupting down into the Jongmun Sea. Okay, so that's my first day in Jeju done and dusted. I'm quite blown away so far by what I've seen. The island is absolutely beautiful. I only did a few things today, but I'm here for a few more days and I've got plenty planned. So let's see what's in store tomorrow. So day number two is underway. I've just got my Starbucks fixed. I'm all caffeined up, I'm ready for the day. Right next to Starbucks though, I did find this cool market. These little markets, they're all over Korea. You'll find them everywhere. But this is the first one I've came across in Jeju. It's full of clothes, shoes, little knickknacks. It's full of fresh fish, everything you can even think of. So if you do come across one of these little markets, I would recommend you go in and check them out because they're great to look at. You might even find something you like and you want to buy. But today we've got a lot planned. We're going to a few more attractions to go and see. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Let's go. Right, so I've came straight from those markets and I've came to yet another waterfall. But this one is particularly special. This one is the only waterfall in Asia that falls directly into the sea. I mean, think about it. Every waterfall that you see goes into a river or a lake or whatever it is, but none of them actually go into the sea. So this one's really, really cool super rocky and at the moment it's super busy but still it does not take away how beautiful this thing is. Jeju Island has some spectacular sights to see but the Jongbang waterfall is most definitely one of the most stunning ones out there. It's just so unique and the fact that you can get up close and personal just makes it so much better. So what you'll also see in Jeju a lot as well is the old ladies on the shore that dive directly into the water and hunt the fresh fish for you to buy directly fresh from the sea. It's kind of a notorious thing in Jeju that you have to go and see, but they are very famous and you should go and see them if you do come across them. There's some right next to the falls here, they're trying to shout us over, trying to get us to buy some fresh fish. Really cool, I don't think I'm gonna buy any, but if you was into the seafood, I would recommend you go to these two. I gotta show you something super cool here. So we're on our way to the next spot. Whoa! We're on our way to the next spot and we've stumbled across an outdoor go-karting arena. 
area thing. But we've came in and it's super cheap, it's like 25,000 which is maybe $15 and you have like 30 minutes going round and around. They have carts for two people and one and you get to razz around and race around the palm trees and the tropical trees. It's absolutely beautiful, what a place to do it on. But it was so much fun, we've just finished doing it and we had a blast, it was great. If you do come across this it's called Wind 1947 and it's on the southern part of the island. It's a great spot to come and drive in the sun, absolutely beautiful, what a place. Something that I really love about Jeju is that I may have mentioned the Halasan Mountain. Oh, I've got to check, I'm crossing the road. The Halasan Mountain is absolutely huge and no matter where you are on the island, you can see the Halasan in the distance. So if we look behind me now, can you see that right there? That's the Halasan Mountain. I think it's a volcano actually, but it's absolutely beautiful. The island's huge, but it's also so small at the same time. It's, oh, it's unreal. So the weather has taken a turn for the worse, the skies are getting grey and it looks like it's going to rain sometime soon. The sun was nice whilst it lasted, but whoa, speed bump, but it is what it is. We've had some nice weather, but as long as there's not another typhoon coming, then we're okay. But at least I got the car, so that's a bonus, but I'm so glad I've got this car, especially on the island. Like I said, everything's so sporadic and spread out. The drives are nice in between the places though, they're like 30, 40 minutes away from each other. So it's a nice little time to recalibrate and just get ready for the next spot, assess your next moves. But the next spot we're going to is the Korean Folk Village, which is it looks really cool, it says it in the name, it's a folk village of Korea, it's going to be really authentic, you're going to see kind of the roots of Korea, see all the little huts, how they used to live back in the day. It's going to be really interesting. It's been pretty hard to park so far in Jeju though. Like I said, we've came at the busiest time, so we've came during Chuseok, which is like the Korean Thanksgiving. It's pretty busy, most main attractions, and the parking can be a bit of a nightmare, but I'm guessing if you do come in the future, try and avoid Chuseok, or try and come in the the less busy months. The thing that makes this place so special is that it contains over 100 houses and facilities that were once actual residences. This is the closest you'll ever come to a Korean folk village from the 1890s. You'll also find an extensive range of folk items are also on display here around this huge site. This place is actually huge as well. I've been walking around for like an hour so far and I've seen so much. There's like painters rooms, there's art centres, there's schools, there's mills where they used to make the food. Everything you can imagine traditional speaking of what they used to do, make and kind of live. It's all here. It's very authentic and there's a lot of history. Super cool. I love how even the 7-Eleven is in the style of an old fashioned hut. So authentic. My favourite part of this place though was the little farm that it had in the centre where you could feed the animals. Although some of the goats got pretty angry with me for some reason. Something else that was really cool was that there was a ton of traditional Korean games that you could play and take part in. But it turns out that I'm pretty bad at all of them. <laughs> I had it there. You'll also notice in Jeju as well that you'll see a lot of these Easter Island looking statues right here. They seem to be like the mascot of Jeju. I don't know the importance or the significance of these things but they are everywhere. They are super cool because they are like volcanic style rock too which as you know the volcano is in the centre of the Jeju Island so it makes a lot of sense that everything is kind of volcano themed. It's really cool. Okay so look what I've got. I've got myself an orange hat. So Jeju's famous for its oranges and you'll see all around the island that have these really cool looking wrinkly crumpled oranges and they are native to the island and apparently they're super special and you need to try them. But everybody I've seen in Jeju has these hats that have oranges on top and I think they're so cool. So I've been looking all around the island for one that finally fits my large head and I found one so I'm so happy about that. 
But what I wanted to show you is that I'm at my second market of the day and this is the Dongmun market. Here, this one is incredible. The one this morning has nothing on the one we've just been to here. So this one has all the perks of a normal market, everything from this morning to fish, clothes, veggies, fruit, everything like that. But this part has a night market full of food stands and it's got the craziest food stands in Jeju. Everywhere I've looked online has told me to come to this place and I am not disappointed. I'm gonna show you some footage now of these food stands, but it's more like a nightclub than a food stand, it's incredible. There's people with fire spraying it everywhere, there's people dancing, everybody's calling you over to the food cart, it's absolute mayhem. But it's such a fun experience. What was immediately clear was that the market was incredibly popular. The nighttime food section is only a small part of the overall mega market, but it seemed like everybody was congregating towards here as soon as it opened at 6pm. In terms of prices, everything was very cheap with most of the meals seemingly coming to somewhere between about 5 and 10,000 won. But you can't deny how good some of this food looks. It's crazy how even if you aren't hungry when you go here, the bustling feels and the electric atmosphere at every food stall will soon give you some appetite. Okay, so I finally got my order, I've got my food. Look at this, what? I got some fried pork, fried shrimp, and rice cake by the looks of it. I've had to come back inside the car because it's just way too stressful in there. Too hot, too sweaty, too many people. But I'm in the car, I'm gonna take my first bite and I'm really looking forward to this. Look at that. Wow. That's good. Okay, I'm going to be splitting this Jeju series into two separate parts. We've covered so much on the adventure so far, but keep a very close eye on part number two. You're definitely not going to want to miss what happens in the second half of this trip. Peace. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the little bell if you would like to be notified of more of my upcoming videos and adventures. It would also mean the world to me if you could leave a thumbs up and a comment down below of what you thought of this amazing place. I shall see you all in the next video.